Hey friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for joining me today. I have a mini slimline card using the Magnolia Cottage set. Now my card today is totally inspired by Sherry Carroll. She created a beautiful card for the release and I just was inspired to kind of create the same thing with my personal spin on it. So here we are with this picture. Instead of turning it into a little cottage, which you can do with this whimsy set, I'm just gonna do a picture with flowers coming out of it. So I'm starting with some gray tones here using my Copic markers. And as you can see, I'm laying down the darkest color first, but on the picture itself, I'm gonna leave a little rim of white around the bottom and towards the top there. It creates a lot of dimension and I love using this technique um, for more rounded three-dimensional things like this. And sometimes I'll even do it on critters in their bellies or like I said, rounded areas. It really adds a touch of dimension that, that makes it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm using quite a few markers here. Um, I did go in with the lightest gray here, the C0, and I discovered that my marker was dry. So I did pull in the C1 to kind of blend it out and help me create that dimension a little bit easier. Again, if you don't have all of the markers, you can use two or three. You just have to work at the blending a little bit harder. So I just, I like using all of my markers whenever I can. It just makes blending so much easier. Okay, I'm sorry for the blurriness here. It kind of goes out of focus a lot because my hand is in the way while I'm coloring. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the flowers. Um, there's lots of lines on this flower. So my personal opinion on this would be to view each petal as its own element. So I'm going in with the darkest marker first, drawing the shading, the darkest shade at the bottom of each of those lines, and then kind of curving it in as I go with each addition of the medium and lighter shades. And then I've pulled in this R00 to kind of blend all of that out. So I'll do that with the greens as well. So even if it's a longer uh, image like this leaf, I am still adding that darkest line first and then rounding it as much as I can as I go in with medium and lighter shades. When I finish coloring everything, I die cut it out and then I want to show you the Cotton Candy Mini Slimline Envelope. This is from Simon Says Stamp and they come in such pretty colors and they're slowly releasing some more, but I love this mini slimline size. It's about three and a half by six and a half. Um, the three and a half side is a little bit shorter than three and a half, so just to be safe, my card today is going to be three and a quarter by six and a half. And I've got this panel here, it's cut down to three inches by six and a quarter inches to mat my card base. I'm just laying out my flowers now to get the arrangement that I like. I put down my flowers first, making sure everything is equal and balanced, and then I go back in with the sprigs and kind of fill it in with the smaller flowers as I go. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to take a piece of Glad Press and Seal. I have grown to love this product and I've only started using it recently. So it helps me hold my arrangement together so that I can lift off my arrangement and work on a nice background for this pitcher of flowers. So I'm just creating a grounding for that pot or pitcher of flowers. Um, hindsight, I could have made this flat instead of curved. Um, it could be sitting on a table and obviously that's not curved, but that's what I did and that's okay because the picture is going to cover up most of it anyway. I'm using the same grays. I'm starting with the darker and then blending it out with the lighter again just to create a grounding for that pot. Now for behind the pot, I wanted to add some green so that it can bring out some of the green in those leaves. I'm using the back side of my bundled sage distress oxide lid to kind of blend in the color into those bristles. I like to do it on a non-porous surface usually. I'm working on a glass surface, but for the video I like to pull out my grid mat just to help me line everything up while it's on camera. But I, I feel like if you work it into the bristles, then you get a better blend. And I like being able to use my back side of my lid and then not have to worry about wiping it off and cleaning off my mat. So that's my new tip, help save me some time and a bit of cleanup, so I am gonna go with that and I hope you enjoy the tip. Okay, so once I have my background done, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere it to my card base. 
You can pop up this panel with some foam tape, but I decided that wasn't necessary because I'm gonna give lots of dimension to my pitcher of flowers by giving it dimension. So I've added foam adhesive strips to hold everything down, and then I'm gonna flip this pot over and adhere it to my card. There are a few loose pieces, but I'll just go ahead and adhere those down with either some foam adhesive dots if I need them, or you can adhere them right over an image that's already there. Okay, so now I'm gonna be working on my sentiment, and I'm going with my favorite embossing over black cardstock in white. So I've stamped that and then added my white embossing powder and I'm just gonna heat set that and then trim it down and then add some foam adhesive. Use my clear T ruler to help me line it all up and then I'll adhere it to my card using that foam adhesive. And once I've done that, I've decided that this sentiment allows for a message on the inside, which I rarely ever do. I think I've done it one or two other times. So I've just opened up my card and put it in my large Misty or standard size Misty. And I'm gonna stamp the sentiment using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And then that will finish my card for today. The inside sentiment just kind of completes that sentiment on the outside. Thanks for visiting my channel today. If you are inspired to create, please tag me on social media. I'd love to see your work. As always, I appreciate your support. Please leave me a comment and be sure to check out my blog if you'd like a full list of everything I used for today's project. You can check out my other videos I'll be linking to here and I hope you all have a great day. Bye everyone.